friends, it's me, Jonah, and today I'll be showing you how to make the scrubbing in the round crochet dishcloth from Yarn Inspirations using Lily Sugar and Cream Scrub Off, but you can also substitute for regular cotton, all scrubby, and you'll see what I mean, because here is your first one that I made, and as you can see, it has these bobbles around the edge, and it's made in a full scrubby yarn. And that way, it's more practical for washing dishes, but you can't really see the texture in there. Because believe it or not, there's actually post stitches in here that you just can't see them. But if you want a prettier dishcloth where you can really see the texture in one for, let's say, the bathroom, you can make it in plain Lily Sugar and Cream, and you have a gorgeous stitch definition of it's like a spiral with the bobbles. So I like Lily Sugar and Cream for like, the bathroom, and I like Scrub Off or Red Heart Scrubby for the kitchen. And I'll make sure I put a link below to this pattern from your inspirations. It's completely free. And even better, if you like stitch diagrams, one is provided. And then you'll also need just one ball of Lily Sugar and Cream, your needle, a pair of scissors, and a 5mm crochet hook. I'm using one of my favorite. It's a furrows, and I love the swirls in it. It's like a galaxy almost. And I'll make sure I put a link below so that you can get one for yourself. So let's get started in making our scrubbing in the round crochet dishcloth. So now if I pull out my dishcloth, you can see it. You can see you start with the solid ring, then you work an increase, and then you work these rib stitches with half double crochet in between, and then you do this popcorn bobble. So I'm going to set this aside, and as you will notice, I did change out my hook. It's one, it's another one of my favorites, and I prefer it because it has a nice glide to it with this nickel top. So you start with a magic ring where you yarn over your fingers, create an X at the bottom, turn it, grab it, pull through, twist, and then right away... You just chain up two. One, two. And that locks your ring into place. Then you're going to go around those strands and create ten half double crochets. And half double crochet, after I make my first one here, is a yarn over, an insert, a pull up a loop, and you yarn over and pull through all three. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, Pull through three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. And number ten. And then you're going to take this strand and put it around to make sure it's not twisted and just pull that nice and tight. Then you're going to take your hook and insert it underneath this first V right over here, right on top, skipping that chain too because it does not count as anything. Now I'm going to chain up two. And I'm going to work two half double crochets into my first stitch. I'm doing the same stitch I did previously. I'm just working two of them into each stitch. I'm still working my two off the booker shades. I'm over half ways and I'm finishing up with my last four now. Four, three, two, and one. So there's our first two rounds, which are just normal half double crochet. And this is where it's gonna get fun, this next row. So slip stitch, chain up two, 
And then I'm going to take my ball and just pull off some lead gel and just pull off a circle of it and set that to the side. And then you post stitch around the next stitch. So you come and go through the back, come back out the front, and over and pull through. And that's it for his post stitch. Then you're gonna yarn over, go into the next half double crochet, and work two stitches. One and two. Maintaining a loose tension so that way you can work into the next row. And then repeat the post stitch. And then going underneath the top two loops. And then come over again. And create a post stitch. And then you're going to work two more after the crochets, and you're just going to keep repeating that around the row. So I just had to work through that stitch, and it's common that sometimes you'll get it split, so just be careful that you don't split it. I'm working my post stitches now. I've worked around this stitch, so I'm going to come up and get right underneath there, and right underneath the next top. And then I'm going to work another post stitch. And then I'm going to work two half double crochets. Pull up. And then I'm going to pull through. And that's my next front post. And you can kind of see the spokes coming out. And I'm going to work two half double crochets in the next stitch. A post stitch and then I'm working my two off double crochets. A post stitch. Two half double crochets. Pulling out some more yarn quick. And there you finished row three. That was the row where it's a splits a lot and it's a little fiddly, but after that, you'll just be soaring on this. It's a very quick project. And you're going to chain up two. Yarn over, crochet a front post stitch around the first double crochet to extend that post. And then in the next stitch, you're going to work a half double crochet. And then you're going to work two half double crochets in the next stitch. Work a front post double crochet around the next front post double crochet. And then you're going to keep repeating that all the way around. You can see how much smoother this round is than the previous round. Because now those two loops on top are easily available and before you kind of had to work around 
And now you can also see why I decided to change up my hooks. So I do recommend when using cotton yarn, use one that's a little has a little more glide to it, like a like for example this one. It's it's a Furls Odyssey and it's has a nice glide to it. So that helps when I work with cotton yarn like loose sugar and cream. And in the next stitch, I'm going to work two. And you will see a pattern starting to form up through round seven, from round three, four, five, six, and seven. A pattern will start to form. So here it is starting. You can see these spokes if I push it up and how it's separating them. So I'm going to keep going around. And then we'll move on to the next row once I complete this one. Just take your time. It's a very quick project, so just make sure you maintain an even tension because it's very noticeable with your post stitches and how they're shaping and gaps. Post stitch. Then you're gonna work two stitches. And then you're going to work another post stitch. Half double crochet. Two half double crochets in the next stitch. Half double crochet. In the next stitch, work two. And then this is your final three stitches. One. Two. Three. And then this is where you'll be able to see the pattern developing in this row. So you're going to chain up two. Work a front post double crochet. And then now in the first two stitches, you're going to work half double crochets. And then in this third stitch right here, you're going to work two. And you're going to yarn over and pull through and create a half double crochet. And then you're going to do a double crochet around the front post. And then you're going to create two half double crochets in the next stitch. And then a post stitch. You can see you have to be very smooth to make sure you have even tension so that your spokes are the same distance apart. You can see how it's starting to form now where we have our spokes and our half double crochet portions right here. So I'm going to work through, pull up, and create two more half double crochets. Two half double crochets. And increase into the next stitch, which is two half double crochets in the same stitch. Two half double crochets in the third stitch. One in each of the first two. So I'm just repeating the same thing I've done this entire time. So if I lay it flat, you can see we have our center here and our center here. And if I put it right on top and run around first, that's one, two, three, four. If I line it up to round four, one, two, three, you can see we're right at four. And then we have five, six, and seven. Increase. So that'll be two off double crochets. Pull up. 
postage. One, two. Gonna do another postage. And then we have three repetitions left. In this stitch, we're gonna work an increase. Straight stitch, and another straight, just up half double crochet. And then now you're gonna work an increase. Then you're gonna work a front post double crochet. Then you're gonna work two half double crochets and then two in the same stitch to end it. Then you're gonna slip stitch to that first front post double crochet and there is round four. So I'm gonna get you started on round five, six, and seven, and then I'll finish the rest of those rounds off camera. One, two, then you're gonna do a front post double crochet around that same front post double crochet then you're gonna work a half double crochet another half double crochet another half double crochet and then two into the next stitch And then you're gonna front post double crochet. So you're gonna work three half double crochets in the next three stitches. So one, two, three, and then work two into the next stitch. And then create a front post double crochet on the next stitch. So that's the start of round five. Now. Finish up round five and we can start round six. As you can see, I've established round one through seven. And if I pull out my actual sample here, you can see it's so simple. You just go from one half double crochet and then two, two, and then an increase, three, and then an increase. And then your final seventh round before the bowels is four half double crochets and increase, post stitch, repeat, post stitch, repeat, post stitch, repeat, post stitch, all the way around. So I'm gonna be finishing up row seven now. So now I'm finishing up row seven, and there's, it's a really simple dishcloth, like you've seen so far, because around one, two, three, you just do a post stitch, and then you do an increase, and then to the next one you do one half double crochet and increase, two half double crochets and increase, three half double crochets and increase, and then for this final round, doing four half double crochets and increase, and then of course your post stitch. So if you want to look back at the pattern, I'll make sure I put a link below so you can see it. And you can also take a peek at that stitch diagram too, if that's how you prefer to read your patterns. Two. Three. Four. And this will be the last stitch here. And then you're gonna slip stitch to that first stitch. And there you have it, your first seven rounds. So I'm gonna pull off some more yarn here. And then kind of just spread it out with your fingers so that the spokes are equal. And there you have it. Now I'll take my actual sample and set it right inside. And you can see that all we have left to do are these bobble popcorns. And this takes quite a while because it's full of popcorns and each popcorn is consisted of five half double crochets so you're going to start with a chain one a single crochet in that same stitch and then work a popcorn into the next stitch and a popcorn is five double crochets one two 
three, there's number three, four, and five. And then once you've completed that, you're gonna take out your hook, drop a loop, and count back to your first double crochet, not the single crochet, your first double crochet, insert from front to back, put this loop on your hook, pull tight, and then just pull that loop back through that first stitch, and then tightly chain one to secure. And then you're gonna go and work a single crochet into the next stitch. So you're gonna work five double crochets into the next stitch, And then you're gonna drop your loop, go back to that first one, pull up, pull through, chain one, and single crochet in the next stitch. Let's do that a few more times. Work five double crochets into the next stitch, two, three, four, five, insert to the first stitch, pull back through, chain one, and single crochet. Let's do that two more times. Five double crochets, three, four, five and then finish the pop popcorn like all the others single crochet and so there you have it there's your first four popcorns established you need to continue that all the way around so here i am and i'm finishing up this row of popcorns five double crochets Pulling through, chain one, single crochet, and then I have to repeat that two more times. And then you're done. Three, four, five, insert. Our last repetition, single crochet. Super speedy popcorn, one double crochet, two double crochets, three double crochets, four double crochets, and five double crochets. Then you're gonna insert, pull back through, chain one, slip stitch to that single crochet, and you can lay your work flat, and I like to just spread it out like this to get those bobbles around evenly so it's a circular shape. Cut your yarn. Take out your needle, flip over your work, pull the strand up through, and then thread your needle. And then I like to go from the front to the back, around, coming underneath these two, cha this chain right here, those two top loops. Back to front, front to back. And then I flip and go back the other direction. Now I'm going back from right to left, from left to right instead of right to left. And there you have it, your scrubbing in the round dishcloth. And there you have it, that's how you make your scrubbing in the round crochet dishcloth, whether you're using scrubby, scrub off, which is a mixture of solid and scrubby, 
or we're just using the nice and classic Lily Sugar and Cream. So, first up, we have our Aqua Sea Foam Color and regular Lily Sugar and Cream. You have your scrubby version, scrubby stripes, with an aqua, a deep blue, a linen-y off-white color, a yellow, and a little bit of aqua right here on the edge and right down there. And then I finished out my set with hot blue Lily Sugar and Cream. And I love the way these three turned out. I love, I always like to make mine correlate with the group of three so that I like to have a scrubby when I make this kind and then two side ones for the bathroom or the bath or the shower or anything else because the scrubby one's the best for the dishes and it's more practical. And don't forget, I put a link below to my favorite crochet hooks from Furls and also link below to the pattern and to my website, johnhands.com. Have a wonderful rest of your day and crochet away, friends.